Hey guys, welcome back. Skitzone series episode three here. Bit of a bonus video. I was falling behind on the videos, getting too far ahead on the, the coding side. So trying to catch up with this bonus video. Topic today is gonna be mostly just command line arguments, how that works in assembly. It's not very straightforward. Um, at least it's not very cross-platform, I'll say that. Then we're going to took, take a look at making some of these utilities from Unix, like RM, touch, and chmod from scratch in assembly. And we're gonna actually use those from now on in the series. So we're making our own tools here. Also, it's kind of crazy. This is our third video. We haven't even covered how to print stuff out yet, yet we're already implementing utilities that we're gonna use for the rest of the series. So kind of crazy. We're gonna be doing some code golf, um, not the fake code golf that they do on like the internet where they just take scripting languages with like random letters meaning different things and calling that code golf. I mean, we're gonna actually minimize the number of bytes being executed by a computer. That's real, real like IRL code golf. And lastly, we're gonna disassemble our executables to kind of can, we can see like what's going on, like how did the, the assembler NASM translate our English into zeros and ones. So that's pretty cool, I, I thought at least. So in the System 5 ABI, I covered this in the previous video very briefly, but the initial process stack is very straightforward and very clear. When you pass in arguments into a function, even before you get to main in C, this is how the stack is supposed to look. You're supposed to have in RSP, so I should say, the register, sorry, the leprechaun whose name is RSP, he's flipping switches, and he flips switches such that that number inside him <laughs> that he's controlling is, I don't know, 50. Obviously, it can't be 50, it has to be multiple of like eight or 16 or whatever, but let's say it's 50 just for simple math here. At address 50, that's the stack, and in that, at that first location, there should be a number which indicates the number of arguments that you've passed in. So let's say you pass, let's say your command was echo high. You, you're a hacker, you're typed in echo high. And so the, that's two arguments. One is echo, one is high. And the first argument is echo, second is high. And uh, the argument count is two. So at RSP, there would be the value of two. And then there'd be echo eight bytes away. And there would be high eight bytes above that. And then you'd have zero eight bytes beyond that. That's kind of how it works, very simple. The problem is, is that System 5 ABI, it's supposed to control all these different OSs, but, and it does control Linux, but the guys on FreeBSD are on drugs. I don't know, they made RDI point to this, not RSP. And literally it's coin flip. Half the time, literally, literally half the time, not even when you install the OS, like half the time when you run software, RSP points to argument count, and half the time it doesn't. And that made me absolutely crazy. I, I was trying to figure this out figure out why that was. I couldn't figure it out. And thankfully I posted to the FreeBSD foreman, two really smart guys figured it out for me. Again, why on earth they're allowed to violate the ABI like that beats me. All you have to know though, is that if you're programming for Linux, use RSP to point to RC. If you're programming for FreeBSD, point to RDI because RSP only points there half the time for whatever reason. Uh, and don't worry, we're gonna implement this in such a way that no matter what you're compiling these things on, if you get the repository yourself, it will automatically pull your OS and it will automatically include the right, the right value for this. We're gonna have like a variable to encode this register. So that's cool. Better example here, let's say you wanted to use ls and you wanted to type on your console ls-la. And ls, by the way, you know, it's obviously it's a, a program, it's a binary, and here's where it's found on Linux, at least on my machine. And so this is how the stack looks before main is even called. This is when the start label is, is finally you know, reached. Obviously there's two arguments. So at RSP, in our previous example of address 50 in, you know, of leprechaun value 50, this is the value at address 50. Then you go back to leprechaun, what's your number? 50, add eight to that. So just 58 in memory, that would be address, that there would be another number there that number happens to be another address. At that address, call it X, there are three bytes. The first one is the ASCII value for L, then S, and then a null byte. That's what's called a null terminated string. It ends in a zero. That's what you do on C at least, how you end the string. Um, that's how you can tell how long the string is without encoding the number of letters ahead of time. So it's you know pretty cool way to do it. And anyway, that's address X. Go back to the leprechaun. What's your number? 50, add 16 to that. That will be another, number in memory at that address 
50, or 66 at the, go to go to that pointer and you'll have a this you'll have a negative sign an l an a and then a null these are all ascii values so here's, here's the table if you're curious go back to the leprechaun what's your number 50 add 24 so address 74 in memory there will be a zero that means you're out of out of arguments or you can just count this value is two this one's one this one's two you're done but anyway if you didn't want to count you have a zero there just in case so that's how that works kind of very straightforward only caveat is this is for linux you'd have to use rdi on freebsd that's how that works so now let's go right ahead and implement some this is just the core functionality for these three utilities so i use rm mostly to delete files so just a single file here, rm xyz, we're gonna replace that with recycle xyz. We're millennials, we have to recycle, obviously. That uses the unlink syscall. That's how you delete stuff on Unix. Then we're gonna to implement touch xyz. That's how you make files. We're gonna, that's how I use it. That's how I use it at least, I use it to make files. I'm gonna replace that with spawn xyz using the open syscall, also the closed syscall. Um, and then lastly, I use chmod predominantly to elevate files that are not executable to be executable. So I do chmod plus x. In fact, I've used that for every single binary we've made in the series so far. Um, so I'm going to replace this string with this. And again, it's just going to handle making things executable and making a single thing executable. So not a full featured utility for sure, but definitely a minimal one. So, and that's going to use the chmod syscall. That's, you know, the same name as the program uh, itself. So let's get into that right now. Let me open up the computer here. Okay. Let me first show you all those functions. So I got a couple functions here that you can use. Um, they're all in the repository. First one is file close, closes files, file delete, deletes files, file open, opens files. And last one is chmod that changes the permissions on a file. So how does this work? Well, um, they're all kind of the same function with this with a little bit of difference here and there. They all do this. They all save certain registers, RCX and R11, and then they restore them afterwards in reverse order, R11, RCX. Why do they do that? It's because syscall screws up those registers. Why does it do that? It beats me, who cares? Um, but yeah, you have to make sure that at least for us, we're trying to preserve all registers in all functions. That's our our ABI that we're making here, that everything is saved. That's not a return value. In our case, you can see here, our return value is REX. So I'm even though we're going to change REX in the program, I'm not going to save and restore REX because I actually want to use it as an output. In this case, REX, you can see here, returns zero on a success and negative one on a fail. And that's not my doing. That's the syscall's doing. The, these OS programmers already implemented that kind of return value in the syscall itself. So we don't have to worry about that. Anyway, yeah, all we do is we save registers, we move the syscall ID into REX. This will vary on Linux and BSD, but don't worry, it will work on your computer. If you're running it properly, it will pull the right value. Um, then it will save the, it will restore the registers that we just saved and then return to the previous part of the code. And that's how all this works. The only caveat would be on file open is that it doesn't return um, success and fail, it returns a file descriptor or a fail. So in RAX. So when you when you work on like Unix, you have to have a file descriptor to interact with the file. Well, you don't have to have it, but it's nice to have one. Um, so let, let's say you want to open a file and and or make a file called ransomware.exe, right? And you want to email all your friends this ransomware. Anyway, in the, in that in that file, when you open it with this this command, you're going to pass in the file name, uh, a null terminated string here, uh, ransomware.exe, ending with a null byte. You're going to pass in some flags and permissions and stuff, and then you're going to run this command and it will return, this syscall will return a file descriptor, let's say 15. And then from now on, whenever you want to write to that file or read from that file or interact with that file in any way, you don't have to refer to it by its path, file name.exe. You could refer to it by its number, 15. And then when you're done, actually, you can close the file. Here you can see we close a file with a file descriptor. So you can just, whenever you're done with the ransomware file, you just pass 15 into this function and it will close for you. You don't have to have the path anymore, just the number. So it makes it a little bit easier. You can now store 
a file in a register as opposed to having to store it somewhere in memory, right? A character array you have to put in memory, whereas you can put a number in a register. So that's pretty cool at least. Anyway, that's how the functions work. We're 10 minutes in here. I want to show you the examples. Um, did I show you something first? Okay, before we get into the examples, I want to show you what's the motivation here. So I'm going to show you two examples for each one. One that's kind of just the bare minimum program and then like an actually code golfed version. So one that like one that the boomers will, will approve of that's very organized and one that's literally stripped down for bytes as far as I can get it. So you can see how this compares with Linux and FreeBSD. Linux files, Linux programs are massive compared to these DIY ones. Look at uh, even look at so we get 96,000 bytes versus 142 bytes. That's just a massive difference. Even RM between FreeBSD, which is much better than Linux, and our version, it's still a factor of 100. We are 100 times smaller than RM. And granted, we're not handling all the fancy flags and help and version stuff that the RM utility does. We're just making it able to delete files. But still, it's pretty neat that we can do that in 1% in the amount of bytes as what FreeBSD is using. And FreeBSD is four times better than Linux. So that's just crazy to me, right? With that out of the way, let's get into the actual programs here. So I have a couple of examples, as, as I mentioned, I have two for each one. Let's take a look at the ch mod, just kind of like the boomer version of this. That's example A. Let's take a look at just the code here. And it's, they're all kind of the same setup. I'll go over just, just one or two to show you how this works. Um, actually, I'll go over all three just because it's, it's very straightforward. Um, so we're including a couple things. One is the syscall listing. This is all the numbers like that are different for different OSs. So that's kind of how we're going to code for both FreeBSD and Linux. Then we have our two syscalls. We have one chmod and one exit. That, these are functions that we've included that handle the syscall processing. And here's the whole, the whole code. The first thing we do is... Um, we check for two arguments. If you remember, at address RSP, so or RDI on Linux or FreeBSD, was supposed to encode where the what what the number of arguments was. So let me go back to our thing. So here at RSP, that was supposed to have the number of arguments in it. And we want it to be two. We want to be able to have a second argument, which is a path. We want to be able to change permissions or do whatever that requires a path in the, in the second argument. So we need this value to be two. And then once we have the value of two, we're going to access RSP plus 16 to actually get that value, to get that null terminated string. So let me go back. Here you can see we're checking if that byte at that address in memory on the stack is two. If it's not two, as in you didn't pass a value or you passed way too many values, <laughs> you didn't pass a path or you passed way too many paths, we're just gonna jump to fail. And that's gonna set a, an error value of one and then leave the program. If it was two, as in you, you use the program correctly, it's gonna not jump to fail, it's going to do this. So what it's gonna do is it's going to um, pull from RSP plus 16 or on FreeBSD, RDI plus 16, uh, uh, an address to a null terminated string, a pointer to a string, and put that in RDI. Then it's going to put the execute permissions, which we've defined in our in our other file, don't worry about what that is, um, into RSI, and we're calling chmod. This is just inputs for the syscall I talked about in the previous video. Then all we do, th at this point we're done. This made the function executable already. This chmod, we're done. The question is, what's next? Now we have to leave the program, and so I'm making a return value of zero here. I'm jumping to leave, which is down here, or exiting. So now, if you were to check the return value of the function, it would be zero if it was a success. It would be one if it was a failure. So that's how that works. And let's just show you that it works. Um, let's make a file. Let's use touch uh, ran somewhere. And you can see, let me look at the permissions. It has just read permissions for the most part. You can see, and it's white, so it's not executable. <clears throat> now, if I run the program, I now have a binary, right? 
I can run that binary, that's our, that's our function, on ransomware. Now, if I look at this, you can see ransomware is now red. It's now executable, so the function works. Now, let's go to our next example. Um, example C, this is gonna be <coughs> touch. This one's a little bit harder because it involves opening a file and then closing it if you wanna be you know, nice about stuff. So let's open up the code.asm. In this case, as I mentioned before, we have one more include. We have um, file open and file close. But other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. We again, we have the same you know, comparison for two arguments. <coughs> Excuse me. And our first thing we do is we open the input file. You can look at all of this, how it works, but it's very boring. We open the input file with certain flags and certain permissions. Then we, so file open, remember that returns the file descriptor in RIX. So you can see here, it returns that value in RIX. We move RIX to RDI. That's the input parameter for file close. So now we can actually close the file that we just opened. And this combination of things will have opened a file, AKA created it. We've given it permissions or, or create file flags. I hope this is a typo. Let's change that. And uh, then we've closed that file. Now all we have to do is leave. So again, it's the same logic to leave as before. With that out of the way, let's, uh, let's run that and show you that it works. So we now have a, a binary. So now we can do binary ransomware. I can't spell. And now you can see we have a ransomware file. The program works. Let's now go to the last example. I think that was E. Yep. Let's open up the code. This is very easy. This is just removing a file. In this case, we have our file delete function I just talked about, as well as the exit syscall. And again, it's the same logic. The only difference is, in this case, we're not checking, you know, we're not opening a file. We're just deleting it straight up via the path. And so we're moving that null terminated string, that address, that pointer into RDI, calling file delete, and then leaving. So very simple, nice and easy. Prove that it works. Let's make a ransomware file again. Um, you can see there it is. And now we can create the binary. There that is. Run binary on ransomware. And you can see ransomware is gone. Nice and easy. Very cool. Last thing I want to show you was this Code Golf version. Just of the last one. Let's just keep it easy here. Example 3F. This is a much smaller executable, but it does exactly the same thing. Let's open up uh, Code.asm. In this case, we have no includes. Why bother? This is this, this is our code golf attempt. So we're trying to cut down bytes. So why bother including functions if we can just inline those functions, right? So we're not including anything anymore. Now, also, why bother checking? I mean, I mean we're trying to save bytes here. Let's not check for proper inputs, right? We, we were checking for having two arguments. Let's screw that. Let's say the user is smart enough to only pass in two arguments. Let's not even bother checking. So we get rid of that part. Now we're just deleting the file. We're moving that value directly from the stack, that address, to the RDI pointer, and moving the syscall ID for delete into RAX, and then calling syscall. That's all it, all this is, and then we're exiting, calling syscall. There's no error handling here, there's no input processing here, nothing like that, it's just the bare bones. One last thing is that we can see we used the, we didn't use the full RAX register, we only used RAL. Why is that? It's because the number, I think the value for sysunlink on, um, on, on FreeBSD is like 10, and I think on Linux it's like 87 or something. And so those values both fit into eight bits. So we can just use the low, low eight bits um, register that's called AL. And so that saves some bytes for us. And we can do that both for the unlink syscall as well as the exit syscall. I think that's one on FreeBSD and 60 on Linux. Again, both those values can fit in eight bits. So nice and easy. Now, if I, uh, if I run that and then I show you the file size, you see this binary is, like I said before, only 132 bytes. Yet it works. If I make ransomware and then I show you that it exists and then I run the binary on ransomware, it works. It deletes the file. And this is only with 12 bytes of actual instructions. And that's what I want to talk about last is after we've talked about, you know, the going from assembly into, you know, binary like this, 
can you go backwards, right? And the answer is absolutely yes. And that's uh, what we're doing here. So for that DIY RM utility, here's what the binary looks like. If you were to hex dump it without NDNS, that's what this means, um, here's what you get. This right column, that's just the ASCII stuff. Screw that, you ignore this whole column. So the first 40 bytes hex or 64 bytes decimal, that is the ELF header. Then the next 38 bytes hex or 56 bytes um, decimal, that's the program header. Those things are 120 bytes of just garbage. That tells the OS how to open your program and what to do. You can see 78 in a couple spots. That's indicating you know the address that you should actually start at, in which case this is 71, 2, 3, or sorry, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's the start address, right? That's where that number is encoding. Anyway, you only have 12 bytes of instructions, and here they are all laid out. And I've broken down what the opcodes are to kind of get a feel of what's going on here. So the easiest thing that we've got going on is we have two syscalls in the third position and in the last position. And the code for a syscall is just a straight up number. It's 0F05. And you can see those values um, here and here. That's nice and easy. The next one is a little bit harder, but not so much harder. That is the instruction that we're using in the second and in the fourth slot. That's moving an immediate value into an eight bit or a one byte register. In this case, it was register AL for both. And what you do is you take B0 hex and you add a number which indicates the register you're talking about. In our case, register AL, the number for that is just zero. So that's your first value, B0. That's what this comes from and this comes from. That just means I'm talking about register AL here. And what are we putting in AL? That's this IB, that means an immediate byte. And that byte is just sysunlink or sysexit, depending on which one you're talking about. In our case, for FreeBSD, that value was 10. And if you look, 0A is hexadecimal for 10. And then sysexit on FreeBSD, that was 1. And here you can see we've passed in the immediate byte of 1, 0, 1. Now, what if you weren't talking about AL? What if you're talking about register BL? So see, AL had a register kind of value of 0, but BL had a register value of 3. And so if you go back here, to change this code from move AL syslink to move BL syslink, it would be B3, 0A. See how that works? Because we just added 3 to B0. You can do that for any of the registers that are in this table like that. Obviously, it gets a little harder with these, so don't look at those. But for the first eight, you can do that. OK, now. Um, the last one, actually, I should say the first one is the hardest. That is the 64-bit version of the move instruction. And we're moving a value from memory into a register. And uh, it's it's a little bit harder, but not so much harder. So the first of the easy parts, right? See this 8B? Well, that straight up is right here. So that just encodes, hey, I'm doing a 64-bit move instruction in this way. 8B, leave that there. That's the second byte. Fine. The next thing that's easy is this 10. That's hexadecimal for 16. If you look, there's our 16. So that's where that comes from. What about the other two bytes? What about 48 and 7F? Ha, huh. this is some, some tough stuff. So the first one is what's called the REX prefix. This is all because this processor was like not made for this purpose. This is like a 16-bit processor that's been transformed to a 32-bit processor, which then was extended to a 64-bit version, and so it's it's all over the place. But anyway, how does REX, you know, prefixing work? Well, I have that here. So that's a, a byte. The first four bits are always going to be 0, 1, 0, 0. And the last four bits are based off these four rows here. In our case, these are all 0. The first one, because we're using 64-bit operands, it's going to be a 1. So in our case, the total number is 01001000, so 0x48. That should be familiar because that is the first um, byte in our instruction. That was the Rx prefix. Okay, lastly, the 7f. This is cool. This is actually encoding 
two different things. It's encoding this and encoding this. And also it's encoding, it's getting us ready for this. Not encoding it, but getting us ready for that. And how does that work? Actually, it's super cool. That is what's called the mod RM encoding. And so here's how this works. Look at the table. That's pretty much how, how it, it's set up. So we're using RDI for both on FreeBSD. Let me go back. So on FreeBSD, remember this sys argc start pointer, that was just a variable that I made up to refer to RDI on FreeBSD and RSP on Linux. So in on FreeBSD, both the destination, which is this one, and the source operand are both RDI. Keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that the number that indicates RDI is 111. So the way this works is, also keep in mind, <laughs> also keep in mind that this placement that we just talked about was 16. 16 fits in eight bits. Everything between negative 128 and positive 127 fits in eight bits, so we or one byte. So we're going to be in this row, for which the mod value is zero one. So for this mod value, we have we have zero one. Then the two registers are the same. They're going to be RDI for both. Remember that those were both one 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 or seven. We just talked about that. So our total opcode or sorry, I guess byte here is this 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, or break that down, it's 0x7f. That should be familiar because that is this. So even these hard instructions, they can be broken down. They get a little bit harder, you know, the more and more stuff you end up doing, but you can always break it down and figure out what every instruction is talking about. Even without using some kind of disassembling software, you can do this with just, you know, the, the, the documentation. So it's very, very easy. Last thing I want to mention, just a very like a pro tip here because it had me going for, for a loop for a while. Um, this is, let's say you didn't have eight, you know, eight bits. You had, or instead of having one byte, you have four bytes, this placement. Well, those bytes are not going to be in the order you expect with the low byte on the far right. The low byte will be first, which maybe you would expect that, maybe you wouldn't. I didn't expect that. And so, you know, if you pass in the value that can't fit, into an 8-bit displacement, let's say you pass in 128, it's not gonna fit. That that value, that 80 value for 128, that's gonna be in the first slot of the displacement, not the fourth slot of the displacement. If that makes sense, great. If not, eh, who, who cares? Just, just try to help the one guy that's gonna help. So anyway, with that out of the way, I'm pretty much done with the video. Not a very long one today. Um, we now know Mailing arguments, command line arguments. We also know how to implement some basic utilities using syscalls like RM, touch, and chmod. And we're gonna use those for the rest of this series. You know, in my code, if you look at the run.sh, I'm using chmod plus x every single time. From now on, we're gonna be using our own version of that. Don't worry. And then lastly, uh, we talked about code golf and also how to decode instructions based off their binary numbers into what they're actually doing on the processor. So you guys, you know, are on your own now. You can make your own utilities like, like these three I did today. Last thing I want to mention is I'm lonely and I have these kind of slideshows from MS Paint, you know, and I want to share them with you guys. So I'm going to make a, a fed honeypot. I mean, sorry, a discord server. I'll put a link in the description. You guys can check it out and we can, we can hang out there. I can give you out these, uh, these note sheets. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.